What's up, heathens? How y'all doing? I'm the godless engineer, and I critically analyze apologist claims to give you the best arguments and information so that you can stand up and use your voice. This is going to be a clip from one of my Did Jesus Exist live streams where I took calls from people in the audience. Today, we have a conversation with someone that I've had a conversation with before, and that would be Elliot. I'll have a link in the description, I'm sure, to my previous discussion with Elliot. But today we're going to be talking about some skepticism I have concerning Paul and Jesus. We're also going to be discussing the differences between a fictive and blood kinship with Jesus, uh, you know, uh, James, the brother of the Lord. And we're also going to mention like how mystery cults factor into the origins of Christianity. So if you want to fuck around and find out how ridiculous Elliot is today about the historical Jesus, then please stay tuned. So we're going to get to our next caller. Uh, hello, caller. How are you? Uh, uh, and uh, what's your name? Oh, hi there. Am I audible? Yes. I can hear you. Yep. Neither. This is Elliot. El Elliot? Like Elliot from yeah. Facebook? Oh, uh, I'm on Facebook, but yeah. No, I just meant like, you know, that's where we mainly interact is Facebook. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hi, yeah, Elliot. Elliot's accent. Yeah. Uh, hi, Elliot. How you doing? How, how are you doing? If anybody doesn't know, I have had a, 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 a I guess, an official debate with Elliot before. Um, it didn't go quite well, so I'm, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna try to keep my cool as much as I can today, and uh, I definitely want to have a conversation with you. So I appreciate you calling in. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. And I'd like to apologize. Back. Uh, let's see. You had posted on your, your Facebook group about, uh, like, James and, uh, James and John not being real characters that existed in history. And I was a little bit snippy mm -hmm. uh, with you mm -hmm. on that, that I posted uh, Galatians, at, what is it, 119, um, yeah. and asked, oh, are you stupid? So that was not, it was not nice, so I, I apologize for that. I, I definitely can attest to... Um, how, uh, you, you know, how I lost my cool in the conversation, uh, in any conversation that we've had. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely doing my best today to keep my cool and have a good conversation with you and everything like that. Um, so what do you yeah, want to talk about easy. specifically? Well, yeah, I mean, um, like there's a whole lot, but I remember you had mentioned Josephus. And so I'm curious, like, you know, the attestation of, you know, Josephus knowing a guy and him calling to be cut down from a cross mm -hmm. and that like, it's probably, is it just, uh, the testimonium that you object to with Josephus? Or do you think it's like, like largely interpolated? Well, I mean, or do you, do you uh, generally believe Josephus is legit? Well, I mean, I think that Josephus is, is legit uh, in a general sense, but um, for every uh, you know historical document we have, we do have to look at it with a skeptical eye. And so we have to, uh, you know, try to suss out like what could be interpolated, what could be interpolated. We also, we also have to apply what's called the smell test. Uh, you know, basically if something seems a bit fishy, then it probably is fishy and we shouldn't consider it historical. Is, is the basic, sorry, excuse me, is, is the basic um, mm -hmm. tack that we take to any historical documentation. But um, I don't come to like the testimonium being a complete fabrication as, uh, you know, uh, haphazardly. So there's a lot of different scholars. And I mean, I, if you want me to, I can bring up the entire list that I have because uh, I've written extensively about this and presented it in my videos. But there's a lot of authors out there that definitely identify this section of Josephus as being out of place in Josephus and not indicative of what Josephus would write. So that's why we uh, have a discrepancy there. And then there's also reasons uh, why the James passage later in book 20 is also a bit suspect. And so uh, I, I, I feel like, the reasons why I doubt the certain passages that we place as far as proving like a blood relative of Jesus, um, why mm -hmm. I doubt those things. I, I feel like it's rooted in real uh, argumentation it is it's rooted in good argumentation and it's rooted in um, things that make, 
you know, I, it either very obvious that it's not a true, uh, like uh, truly written by Josephus, or at least uh, it's doubtful that it is. So if, if something is doubtful, then there's no way that I can say this was written by Josephus. This is what he meant. And so this proves a historical Jesus. Do you, do you understand how I get there? Yeah. Um, and it's just like, to me, like, I, d I don't know of anybody who doubts the James, the brother of the Lord as actually historical, like, unless you're full on Dutch radical. Right. And then like, so there are people that for doubt me, it. you just, you just don't agree with them. No, I wasn't aware of any that doubted the, the historicity of that passage. It's well, just except the interpre for, interpretation. You said, well, I mean, you, you said except for Dutch radicals. Did oh you know? no, that's just me assuming like that would be like something that a Dutch radical would say. But oh, okay. I don't know of a Dutch radical that has doubted it. Then why would but you I say? Mean, I mean, I would, I would bet they would. So I mean, if you don't know of any Dutch radicals that make that argument, then why would you say it? I guess to keep it fair. Like, okay. I'm sure I I would bet that there are some, but overwhelmingly, I'm not. Well, I'm not aware of any people that doubt its uh, its authenticity. Okay, well, I mean, there there are like uh, peer reviewed. Uh, th there is at least one uh, that I know of peer reviewed article that doubts it and makes a compelling case against it. Um, but also, um, I feel like assuming that the James reference in Book Twenty of Josephus's uh, Antiquities of the Jews. Uh, oh would, would... shoot! No, we're talking huh? about different things. We're talking about the what is it, Galatians? Um, that Paul goes to talk to the brother of the Lord. Oh, that's okay. So different. Galatians. Okay. It, yes. Yes. So, sorry, I thought we were still talking about. Okay. Josephus. So that's where that, that's where the disconnect came from. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, plenty of people disagree with that. Yeah. From from Josephus. Okay. Well, I mean, from from the brother of the Lord, the problem that I have with that is that I haven't heard a coherent argument that suggests that we should take the blood kin relationship versus a fictive kinship. And so ultimately, like my actual position is, is that we can't know what he's talking about mm -hmm. here. I'm just more convinced yeah. by the mythicist argument that it was a fictive kinship rather than it was a blood relation. But ultimately, I can't know in what way he was referring to people. So I remain agnostic. On that. Yeah. So, you know, Chrissy Hansen, right? Of course. Yeah. Okay. So she did a, uh, a paper on that and found that in no instance of Greek, uh, of, of contemporary Koine Greek, is it like a spiritual fictive kinship? There is zero example. So, so let, let me it. ask you this. Are, you're, you're suggesting mm -hmm. that we totally toss out Paul's theology in order to interpret what Paul is saying. here? No, like, no? what do you mean? How, how does that, how does that contradict well, his theology? So, so uh, maybe, maybe you can steal man. What is Paul's theology oh, on, got it. on, on the family of God? Okay, so okay, so I got you. So maybe I was like speaking too general. Um, so when we're naming a person like James, the brother of the Lord, right? That there's no instances of that being a, a fictive kinship. Right? Well, uh, how so can they, they you, how can you make that statement? You... Uh, sorry, 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 uh, 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 there. But um, how can you make that statement when Paul clearly uses? Um, you know, uh, uses classifiers later on in his epistles when he's talking about people that are literally blood relatives. But here, when he's talking about, uh, uh, you know, James being the brother of the Lord, he doesn't use any kind of, uh, of clarifying statements like brother of the Lord in the flesh or anything that would indicate like a blood relationship to the brother. Um, and mm -hmm. Jesus's family or not Jesus, but uh, Paul's family of God uh, theology kind of necessitates that all Christians would be mm -hmm. a brother of the Lord. So how do you distinguish the phrase brother of the Lord from actual blood kinship that's later on uh, attested by Paul? Yeah. So 
that in this way, like referring to James, the brother of the Lord, right? It, it never refers to fictive kinship. And uh, with contemporary uh, examples, it never the, does. The, the word so used we, for brother and, literally mm-hmm. means that it could be fictive kinship or blood relation. Typically, you would need to sort of mm-hmm. uh, uh, add a clarifier, especially considering Paul's theology. Mm-hmm. That's why I said that you'd have to throw out Paul's theology in order to make this presumption. Um, so, I mean, wh- why are you throwing out Paul's oh. theology on the on the family of God in order to make this presumption? Yeah, I'm not sure that I'm doing that, and I'm not sure I understand what you're getting at. But uh, Do you mind so if I like, expound? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, let me ask you this first. Um, did Paul see all Christians as part of the family of God? Uh, yeah. Yeah? I mean, I could agree okay. with that. So, so yeah. did Paul consider Jesus to be the firstborn of many brethren? Um, you're probably referring to a specific passage, but yeah, firstborn, yeah. Okay. So if you were part of the family of God and Jesus is the firstborn of many yeah. brethren, if I call you a brother of the Lord, what does that mean? Um, yeah, I mean, it would be, I mean, ambiguous, thus the whole debate about it, but... But you don't think um, that there's a debate, right? Yeah, I don't think... Yeah, no, I know what you're... Yeah, I know what you mean, though I don't think Paul would talk like that. So, like, why not? Uh, in in Galatians, Paul, just before Galatians one nineteen, he calls everybody that he's speaking mm-hmm. to as uh, brothers and sisters, or well, I guess in the original mm-hmm. it's just brothers. But I mean, he refers to everybody as brothers, mm-hmm. and in other passages, he refers to fellow mm-hmm. Christians as brothers, like in this fictive kinship way, because mm-hmm. Jesus pr- procures this fictive kinship with other Christians through his death and resurrection. So it kind of seems to me like calling mm-hmm. somebody brother of the Lord is a rather ambiguous way to refer to a fellow Christian and may in fact be a way that Christians referred to each other prior to the moniker of Christian being coined. Well, so, I mean, yeah, that's an interesting point, but. So, well, well, what's like something that refutes point, my point? About, that there's no examples of it like There's no I mean, examples of it i mean it's all across it it, is, but I, i'm sorry it's all across paul's epistles the uh, examples of him uh referring to people as brothers and then uh also being very specific when he's referring to somebody as a literal literal blood relative like i said i've got documents that cover uh-huh. all of this so like i could definitely look up specific passages if you wanted me to but I'm just saying that like yeah. he makes a clear distinction between blood relatives and like fictive kinship. And in this passage, it's ambiguous. Well, I'm not sure that it would be taken as ambiguous in its context. I so, think in its context, like, it's definitely ambiguous. I'll, well, to maybe a modern reader. No, right? no, no. To, but, to a first century um, Koine Greek reader, it's ambiguous. Well, okay, but I mean, I would I would read Hansen's paper um, because I thought it was pretty conclusive. Okay, if but, it's pretty conclusive, then you should be able um, to quote or mm-hmm. at least tell me like what's the rationale that Chrissy uses in order to get to the position that we should presume a fict a, a, a blood relationship rather than a fictive kinship. Well, I mean, I I could pull it up, but I mean. I mean, so, okay, so with with Pauline theology, he's going to talk about, like, joint heirs with Christ, right? And so we're, we're going to inherit everything along with Christ, right? So there's, like, an idea of uh, being brothers, right, being... Um, what does it mean to be a brother you know, a, a, for, for Paul? Christ? Uh, to be family, I would say. Um, Which family? Mm-hmm. 
Uh, well, like fa- like family in Christ. Right. There right? you go. So family in Christ. So when he says that somebody is a brother mm-hmm. or a brother of the Lord, what could he mean? I mean, Jesus only attained the Lord status after he died and resurrected, and so therefore he was celestial at that point. So when he talks about being a brother of the Lord, he's talking about being a brother of this celestial figure, is he not? Um, a brother of a celestial figure. Um, no. Um, so you don't think the I'm Lord convinced. is a celestial figure? Um, is the Lord a celestial figure? I mean, I don't think it's necessarily the case. I mean, it, it wouldn't mean that it couldn't be, but I don't think... I mean, we're not talking about like a Lord and medieval like class structure Lord. We're talking about Lord, Mm -hmm. the celestial ruler of reality and everything. Like that's, that's who Mm -hmm. he was referencing when he says brother of the Lord. He's not talking about some schmuck down the street. He's talking about like God. Mm -hmm. Well, he's talking about Jesus, right? Which he's talking about the Lord getting to, Oh, I'm not aware of any instance where he mentions Lord that he's not referring to Jesus. And he right. seems to and, be... And, Jesus, and, and so that like would mean reading, Jesus is part of the Godhead, right? No. No, I think did, we're did reading Jesus, did, did Paul know of Did Paul know of Jesus as anything but a celestial figure? I believe so, yeah. All right. Did, well, did he fact, say that Jesus I mean, is Lord? Mm-hmm. He said that Jesus is Lord, right? right? Which yeah. he, he he would then equate with like God, not not that he mm. not that he thought that Jesus was God, but that he was on the same level as God, or at least he inhabited no, the so. same kind of space as God or had the same kind of authority as God. Mm, I wouldn't think so. Like so no? when I read the epistles. I and I mean everybody reads them differently, but I see. It's let, oh, hold on. Let, let me make sure I get this straight. Really? When somebody references mm-hmm. the Lord, you don't think that they mean like God or, in some sense, a celestial being that has control over reality. Like when somebody says, uh, mm-hmm. "May the Lord be with you," they're not talking about God. Mm-hmm. No, they definitely are. I'm talking about Paul's kind of uh if god if, if paul to were to manifest in front yeah. of you elliot and, and 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 you know somebody said may the lord be with you like mm-hmm. you know if, if paul manifested in front of you and said may the lord be with you mm-hmm. who would he be talking about would he be talking about a celestial god or would he be talking about some fuck down the street that like apparently controls your block like which one is he talking about mm-hmm. Well, I don't think either. Um, so I think he would be talking about Jesus. He would be and, talking about Jesus, um, who is the Lord, and the Lord, mm-hmm. the Lord is who? Mm-hmm. Is the Lord Jesus. God? No. Not under Pauline the theology. Lord is, the Lord so. is not God. God is God. The Lord is not part of the Godhead, or and He's not celestial. He's some bumblefuck down the so, street. Is that what you're telling me? I mean, not in those words, but um, yeah, no. Say I bumblefuck. would say Paul thought of Jesus. What's it, what? Say bumblefuck. What? Like the Lord is bumblefuck down the street. I want to. <laughs> I mean, tell me that. Unless you're uh, telling me that that the the Lord is the bumblefuck down the street then, I mean, I can't see Jesus as anything other than a celestial spirit that is uh, alongside the Lord, well, maybe uh, alongside God, I should say, not exactly God, mm-hmm. but is is like in God's court, uh, the Lord is, is uh, what God uses to create everything. He's his agent of creation. Mm-hmm. He's the high priest of the Jewish temple, mm-hmm. like all of that shit. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's legit. I mean, that's um, a lot of the, I mean, what do we say? That's, um, I mean, that's a good point, you know, from 
you know, to hear from a mythicist, I think that's a good point. Uh, but this is not exactly so, the clowns that you put out the, the, the memes for on Facebook, huh? Kind of fucking intelligent, well, huh? Be, right. I think when, when the guy, uh, I mean, I don't mean to be offensive, but when the clown yes, you gets do. to the point no, that no, he's no. talking don't about, don't bullshit me about this, Elliot. You mean to be offensive. When you yeah. put out your memes on Facebook, you represent mythicists as clowns and you mean to be offensive. Don't try to bullshit it. Own up to the douchebaggery. I do. I definitely present historicists as being ridiculous mm -hmm. at times. Granted, I never represent them as clowns because I value the historicists mm -hmm. in, in scholarship. Like I value their opinions, but you know, uh, don't bullshit me about this. Oh, I'm not trying to be offensive. Yes, you are. Don't, don't bullshit me about this. Well, sir. well it's to get laughs from uh, people, but historicist. Uh, I mean, yeah, no, historicist I mean, that deep throat Bart Ehrman's dick. Like that's who you're trying to appeal to. <laughs> well, that's, another, that's another good. Yeah. No, that's another good example. When I had that meme of um, there's a clown behind a computer and that yeah. uh, uh, it says, a mythicist needs to, or when a mythicist argue, sends an argumentative email to Bart Ehrman or something like that. I thought that was pretty funny, but, uh, I no, I mean, would. it's kind of like, what's that? I, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I understand I mean, that you put, you put that out there. I mean, I don't think that mythicists yeah. are doing that, but you know, Whatever. I, I'm not gonna say that mythicists aren't doing that, and I would deny or mm -hmm. I would I would disparage any mythicist that openly emails Bart Ehrman to give them their their peace of mind about his historical position, because that's obviously not gonna mm -hmm. change his mind because I know it wouldn't change my mind. Yeah. I get historical yeah, historicists so emailing me and I, it doesn't change my opinion. So Yeah, so I mean I have a few things with that is that you know, sometimes, you know, poking fun, I mean, it may, might make people angry, but I think the more reasonable people, because, you know, I can, I can take, uh, you know, jokes from mythicists, too. Um, but just like uh, Matt Dillahunty says, that you sometimes need to poke fun at people so they can understand the absurdity of their beliefs. Right? Okay. So Where's the absurdity of mythicism? To, I mean, where to begin? Um, uh, uh, Christianity as a mystery cult. Nobody right. believes that. Nobody name, name, believes name that. Name one right? thing about Christianity that isn't mystery cult like that. Mis that Christianity shares with mystery cults. Like, there's obviously differences between them because that's the general. Mm -hmm. That's the general way that mystery cults are. They are syncretized with previous cults mm -hmm. and. Um, but there's a common core to all mystery cults. So that of that mm -hmm. common core, mm -hmm. where does uh, Christianity differ from mystery cults? Yeah, that um, it's individualistic. Um, yep, that's a that's a common thing amongst a uh, 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 mystery cult. So what's next? Uh, it's not secret. It was secret. Uh, we can tell with Paul's letters that he uses a lot of the nomenclature mm -hmm. that is used by mystery cults yeah. uh, to refer. Hold, hold on. Yeah, yeah. To, 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 uh, no, no. Wait a second. To refer to those that right. are, are young in, in their uh, understanding of Christianity and those that are fully initiated. He calls them, uh, you know, infant mm -hmm. or young as opposed to old or uh, fully initiated. So, there's definitely that language and that sort of knowledge of a uh, differentiation mm -hmm. between young or newly yeah. initiated so, or uninitiated and those that are fully initiated into the cult. So next point. Yeah. So, yeah. So um, that's another example of something that's silly that mythicists believe but, is that it's the overwhelming consensus that this is not mystery cult language. Right. Uh, 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 appeal to add populum. Uh, appeal to authority, add populum, bandwagon fallacy. Like, I don't know how many fallacies you want me to name off here that describe the exact thing that yeah. you're saying here. 
just because a bunch of, right. a bunch of people so, agree that it, it's mm-hmm. not mystery cult uh, doesn't mean that it's actually not mystery cult. Right. So, so this kind of reminds me of another belief that people hold to um, that you can look at one individual thing and be like, okay, I can, can, you know, get behind Christianity being a mystery cult. I can, right. So, but like with a lot of these things, when you put everything together, it just doesn't work. Right. So like what, like you mentioned Bart Ehrman, right. What does so it work? A long, yeah, so on every position a mythicist holds, I can't think of one that's not the case. It's the min- minority view across the line. Sometimes it's Why does that matter? 100 why, why, like, why do we have to focus on how popular so the argument you, is? You, why can't we focus on mm-hmm. what the our arguments actually are? Yeah. So we can, right? And we can take a broad view. We just have to ask ourselves why does nobody think Christianity started as a mystery cult? Why does nobody I don't, I don't care about that? that. I, 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 no, no, Elliot, I don't right? care about that. I care about the arguments and, and yeah. the logical sense that they make. So if you can make a logical argument so, for why any one of my book, positions right? are, don't make sense, then I will listen to it. But unless you can make a logical argument as to why my position is false, then I'm not going to listen mm-hmm. to it because I don't care about how many different fucking Christian New Testament apologists tell me that I'm wrong because I guarantee mm-hmm. you that uh, all of those New Testament Christian apologists would say that Jesus definitely resurrected from the dead. And we can know that because of fucking history. Like, they they tell me that a magical Jew resurrected from the dead. What I'm looking for mm-hmm. are the arguments. What arguments do you use to establish Jesus in history? That's what matters. It's not what fucking Joe Blow Schmo from New Testament studies thinks and how all of his friends think. It's the arguments that are used. I'm I'm a very sophisticated guy. I mean, granted, I you know I I drink on occasion. Uh, I'm a very sophisticated guy and I I've read all of the arguments. I've examined all of the arguments. I've, I've listened to both sides and it seems like the more logical and analytical position is coming from the mythicist side. So what on your end, and I'm going to end on this because we've been going for about 30 minutes here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to end on this. Mm -hmm. What of your side presents a logical analytical position against the evidence that's presented from the mythicist camp? Tell me what that position yeah. is, so, what the evidence is. So I've never seen evidence of mythicism, so I really couldn't tell you. I've seen like bald assertions That's not and an argument. Uh, waving. Yeah, okay. So there's whole books written on the subject, right? So there's an author named uh, Raymond Brown. Uh, he wrote about the Old Testament being found in the mystery language um, in. Uh, you know, Paul's epistles, right? Which makes a very good case on why this, why the mystery school language doesn't make sense. That Paul regularly that uses mystery, mystery cult language in his stuff. So I don't, uh, I, I haven't read the thing that you're talking about, but so it seems fucking word, wrong. So, yeah. I mean, so I'm just going to. Um, yeah, I know because I mean, you're not going to look at it, right? Because maybe that would. No, no, no. It's not that I'm not going to look at it. It's that I haven't read it yet. See, this is a common thing that you do, Elliot. No, no, shut shut the fuck up, Elliot. Look, this is a common thing that you do. You say that I'm not going to read it when in actuality I will read it, but I just haven't fucking read it yet. Why can't you get that through your thick fucking skull at this point? Okay. Why can't you just understand that I haven't read it yet? So I don't have an opinion on it, but at the same time, it seems like this guy has a lot writing on him. And uh, if this guy hasn't written past 2014, then he seems like he's not up to date with the most recent information about Christian origins has, uh, when was it written? Um, I don't know. 
it was a while was ago. It, was it definitely written before 2014? Oh, so, yes. Yeah. Okay, then it's so, fucking not up to date with yeah. the most current scholarship. Present me something that's up to date with the most current fucking scholarship, and I will read it. <clears throat> if you can't, then so I just don't give just, a fuck. Just look at literally, look up literally any paper published on textual criticism anywhere, right? So After 2014. This is, this is what mythicists do. Yeah, I, this is what mythicists do. You take uh, Bart Ehrman and say, oh, he's crazy. Oh, his ideas are so I don't so say that Bart Ehrman's crazy. This I say that I disagree with him on this one particular point. That's yeah. all that I say. I don't say that he's crazy. I use his uh, content regularly. I use his books regularly, yeah. especially his peer-reviewed books on the New Testament. I use those regularly in my positions. So don't sit there and act like I just totally throw out Bart Ehrman no. for everything. I say that I disagree with him on very no, specific topics. That. Yeah. That's exactly so what you're fucking is, saying right now. No, I'm not saying just Bart Ehrman. It's with literally everything. Literally no, everything. No, I don't say literally just Bart Ehrman, but every... I'm responding to you talking about how I deal with Bart Ehrman. I disagree with him on hyper-specific topics, but other topics, like, he's perfectly fine on, like, his reasoning is perfectly mm -hmm. legitimate, and that's what I've determined through my own research in, into, like, reading his books and everything like uh -huh. that. So like you uh, talking about how I just toss out Bart Ehrman is just fucking wrong and it's just misleading no. and it's, so it's misrepresenting my position. Yeah, that's not what I'm saying. So like, let's okay, say look, Dan McClellan. Uh, we've oh, been yeah, going for about 31 crazy, minutes now. Right? I'm going to allow you to make a final statement about uh, like our discussion and everything. I do have one other caller in the queue, so I'm going to get to them, but mm -hmm. I do want to give you the last word on, on this particular topic. So feel free to say what you want yep. and I, I won't have any kind of response. You just say what you want. All right. So I'd say anybody that considers mythicism uh, to be a, anybody convinced of mythicism, look around when your friends tell you you're drunk, lay down, to ask them why why do you think this is this out is outrageous nonsense right and then read uh, a legit scholarly uh, paper or book on the subject all right so thanks for having me on uh, have a good night okay thank you so much Elliot I appreciate your call yep. Oh, well, heathens, uh, that was an interesting call. Uh, Elliot's always interesting. But I would love to know what you guys thought about, like, my skepticism of uh, Paul's references to Jesus. Um, and specifically the fictive kinship versus blood kinship with Jesus that James seems to have in Galatians 1.19. Also, how do you think mystery cults factor into the origins of Christianity? Let me know down below in the comments. And while you're down there, why don't you smash that like button and subscribe if you like this kind of content. And don't forget to stand up and use your voice. Bye, heathens.